Hello, collective, and welcome to the Moon Report. My name is Marlene. I am your resident moon goddess, the modern mystic, and I am here to share the full moon in Leo that we are experiencing today, January 25th. And it happened at 1254 Eastern Standard Time at five degrees of Leo. And I'm so happy to be sharing space with you again. Uh, for those of you that are new around here, welcome. Um, whether you're here joining me on Zoom live or you're watching the replay, um, I love to have new people in this space and we want you to feel at home. So if you have any questions in regards to anything that I am talking about that you need clarification, just leave comments um, on the moon section in Mighty Networks if you're part of the collective or comment on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. And let's get a conversation going about what some of these aspects mean. Um, I really want to encourage you to further look beyond these moon reports to see how these aspects affect you, meaning where is this full moon happening for you? Where is Leo in your chart? If you're a uh, astrology enthusiast and you know what your natal chart is, and for those of you who are beginners, a natal chart is basically a map of where the stars were, where the alignments were, what was going on in the sky in the time that you were born, location that you were born, and the day that you were born. So that gives you more insight into what's going on personally for you in this full moon. There's a lot of tension during this full moon, and I'm going to go deeper into that. And really, there's a lot of possibilities positivity that can come out of this tension. There's a lot to be learned from what it's illuminating for us. Full moons in Leo are usually more fun and more outgoing. And this one is a bit, it, let's just say it doesn't feel as good as a Leo full moon usually does. And it is because of that tension and the square aspects that are happening. So I'm going to share my screen and show you the chart um, for this full moon. And here we're looking at the exact time. For us here, Eastern Standard, um, it, ha it didn't happen too long ago at 12.54. Um, so just past noon. And what I'm talking about here, here's the moon. Here's the sun. So the full moon is that opposition to the sun, that illumination from the sun. And here's Pluto, who just recently went into Aquarius within five degrees of the sun opposing the moon. So that Plutonian energy is bringing a lot of tension, primarily because it's at zero degrees. And it's just come into a new sign. And we'll be talking about that as well. And then there's this square that's happening with Jupiter over here in Taurus. And then what's left is really across the way here, Scorpio. So there's a little bit of tension. Of like It's not a grand cross, but there is a tightness that's happening here. And it gives us an opportunity to look at things. Um, I feel like there's a lot of scorpionic energy in this um, full moon. And I can, primarily it comes from Pluto and this shift that we're all feeling into Aquarius. And, you know, if we take a look at this full moon now, and we think back to August of last year when there was a Venus in retrograde in Leo. And there's a lot that is coming up from that time in terms of relationship during this full moon. So 
what where if you can place yourself and see where you were at this time last year and you can move into like move through space and time and see how your relationships have developed i really encourage you to either journal about it or take a moment to reflect and see if you can pick out any nuggets of information of wisdom of insight of connections and see where you are today in terms of those relationships because we're releasing a lot of energy from relationships and whatever it is that we need to know will be illuminated during this full moon so feelings will surface memories may surface and it's important to stay aware of that because you can transcend that and with the aspects of this chart we're going to be seeing the shadow aspects of the signs that are involved here the access of leo and aquarius and then the access of taurus and scorpio so let's look at that let's look at the shadow aspects of these signs so first i want to say pluto went into aquarius on the 20th of this month and I want to remind everybody that during September, September through November, Pluto is going back into Capricorn. So we're not done with Capricorn just yet. We're not done with that cycle just yet. And we will be stepping into a lot of new territory in terms of the deep transformations that we're going to be receiving from the universe primarily from what Pluto is doing, right, in Aquarius. And we will be moving back into Capricorn, September through November, and then finally Pluto is going to go back into Aquarius and stay there for a while. Jupiter is squaring this moon in Taurus. So a lot of the tension is coming from these tight aspects. So let's break it down and look at Taurus's shadow aspects. So Taurus's shadow aspects are, um, they could be, they could, there could be some possessive energy, some obsessive energy, um, some energy around scarcity, uh, around what we value primarily maybe mindset, money mindset around what we value and scarcity around that. Um, there could be fear of survival. Are we going to make it? Are you going to make it? Am I going to get through this? So some of these themes may be coming up in terms of Taurus. Um, so Scorpio, what's on that axis? Scorpio is opposite to Taurus. So what are the shadow aspects of Scorpio? Um, they can uh, be jealous. There can be some jealousy, some envy. There could be some manipulation that you're dealing with or, or dishing out, right? Um, secrets, some shadows around secrets, feelings of abandonment, radical behavior. And then when we look at the axis of Aquarius and Leo, some of the ad, uh, shadow aspects of Aquarius are, um, you know, being icy cold, right? Detached, aloof, like in a, in a way that is confusing. Um, nervous, nervous energy, um, you know, uh, a negative impact to your nervous system, instability, disruption, and all coming at a really fast rate. Um, you know, Aquarius and primarily Uranus moves fast and Uranus will be coming out of retrograde soon. 
as well. So let's go to the other side, Leo now. And what are the shadow aspects of Leo? So um, feelings of um, inadequacy, feelings of needing approval from others, um, needing validation, not feeling like they're special enough, like they are enough, right? Where that energy, right, feels that way. So these are some of the examples of themes that may be coming up for you in different areas. And it's important to become aware of them and take a moment to slow down and integrate some of these energies. We're going to need to, you know, maybe take extra time grounding using practices that really make us feel close to the earth, maybe going out into nature. I know for some of us, it's really cold out there and snowing. Um, but, uh, you know, trying to connect to that mother nature energy as much as possible in whatever way you can, maybe through drinking some cacao or some tea, some herbs, um, just whatever way you ground that might be a really good idea in the next couple of days to incorporate those practices a little bit more in your daily routines so that we can really gain clarity, so that we can gain clarity around, okay, how are these shadows showing up for me, right? And how can I slow down enough to flip this energy? Because here's where the self-mastery is at. Here is where we up level and raise our vibration so that all of these energies that are presenting themselves to us in some way, we can turn them into something positive. And here is where the power of this full moon is. Here's where this can be a very pivotal and positive moment in the way that we shift things. Shift things may be coming from last August. Okay. So let's go through it, right? How can we flip this? How can we raise the vibration? You know, and remember Pluto is in Aquarius, right? So what is the deep transformation going to be around Aquarian themes? Right? Feeling detached, feeling disconnected, feeling unstable. Feeling nervous and doing a number on our nervous system. So self-care, self-care, self-care. I can't say it enough. You know, um, I know usually around Leo, it's like, let's go express. Let's go party. Let's go do the thing. Right. So then have a party at, at a spa. Have a party in your bedroom <laughs> while you're doing some pleasure practices, you know, or like just resting and integrating. That's the kind of party that we need to be focusing on because we're going to need to refuel. And coming off the new moon energy that was so go, go, go. And then coming into this, I know that it's constantly like if you've been watching you know, for a few months now, it's like, okay, go hurry up. Okay, no, now wait. Okay, slow down. Okay, now hurry up, go. So it feels like this yo-yo effect, but really it's it's life and it's expansions and contractions. And there's as much to learn in the contraction as there is in the expansion. So there's value in all of it. And dare I say that we learn more during the contraction and we get to know ourselves in a deeper more meaningful way so let's look at some of the light aspects of taurus right um you know why don't you know those of you that are here live with me can you put some of um the light aspects of taurus that you know of you know um Maybe some key words that remind you of the beautiful things that Taurus has to offer 
Allison says stable and grounded. Catherine says luxury. Ilona says abundant, stable, secure. Yes, these are some of the light aspects of Taurus and feeling really, really grounded in your body, feeling secure. <laughs> Ilona says foodie. Yes, Taurus knows how to eat, man. I love to eat with a Taurus. That's for sure. Um, so those are some of the beautiful, like, and remember Taurus is ruled by Venus. So there's a lot about what we value in Taurus, right? And how we see ourselves abundant and prosperous and surrounded by beauty and the finer things. Allison says lush and yummy. Yes. You know, Taurus is 800 thread count on your sheets, man. Okay. That is Taurus energy right there. So cool. Now let's look across from Taurus and go to Scorpio. And let's see, drop some words that remind you of the light that Scorpio has to offer. Scorpio is such a powerful and complex sign. Um, pride, proud, Magnetic, Ilona says, powerful, insightful. Catherine says, depth and insight, insightful, exactly, and depth, deep, deep. No one goes deeper than a Scorpio. And it's a beautiful thing um, to see the energy just regenerate into something new over and over again. Keep us guessing. Be mysterious. Yes, it's secrets, but when it's reflected in a positive way, it's such a beautiful, deep mystery to that Scorpio energy and how it continues to regenerate from the ashes. Ilona says it's the ultimate shadow worker. Yes. And the light that comes after, the healing that comes after is something that is very unique. So I love these. Uh, let's try the other axis. Aquarius. What are some of the beautiful positive aspects that Aquarius has to offer? Um, you know, with Pluto coming into Aquarius now, it's it's a time where we're going to be seeing a lot of these themes. Catherine says, innovative. Yes. Um, if anything, um, unique and unconventional in its innova innovation. And, and community, Allison says, collective holding. Ilona, unique, visionary, group mindset, futuristic. Aquarius always has their eye in the future, the humanitarian of the Zodiac. And it's funny how we can say that about Aquarius and then also say how detached and cool and aloof they could be, right? Freak, freak flag flyer. I love that. Say that five times in a row. <laughs> you know, and it's true because they're so unique and it's almost quirky um, and kooky sometimes the energy. Um, but, you know, we're going to be going into a lot of these themes. And, you know, pretty soon in not so, you know, far in the future, there are certain things about the world as we know now that are going to be very different. They're going to feel different. The feeling of Capricorn and the feeling of Aquarius is very different. And when it comes to deep transformation, those are different themes that we're going to be dealing with. So, um, Leo, what are some of the light aspects that we can take from Leo? Leo is oh, all about the heart, baby. All about the heart. And it's... Lilona says, courageous, heart-centered, knows how to take up space. Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes. Does a Leo love a limelight? Very generous. Very, very generous. Catch a Leo on a good day and you will be really, really, um, how do they say, um, wined and dined, right? Um, now proud and pride, Ali, yes. <laughs> but did you say that about um, Scorpio? Because Scorpios are proud, are also very, very proud, you know, and the energy. And when I say the energy, and I'm talking just the general energy, not every Scorpio, not every Scorpio sun sign expresses the energy in the same way. You know, our chart, our natal chart is made up of a lot of aspects and a lot of planets and a lot of intricacies. And we are all different. Um, so I love, thank you so much for sharing everybody. Um, it's such a good way to connect to the positive aspects because we're always dealing with both. And to be able to move and evolve to the next level, we need to transcend certain things. We need to trans transcend the lessons that we came here to learn. And we're here to transmute and transform those things. And this full moon will be illuminating some of these things for you. And they're coming up for resolution. They're coming up to be dealt with once and for all. So I want to do a little exercise with you. In my hand, I have four archetypes. And each uh, in the tarot. And each of these archetypes um, are connected to the astro astrological sign of either Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio or Taurus. And I'm going to show you some of it, like, you know, one at a time. And I would like for everyone who's here to try to guess which archetype belongs to which sign, right? So out of those four signs, Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, and Taurus, I'm going to show you four archetypes and see if you can match them, okay? and see who's going to come out first and take a good look at the symbology and the imagery of each sign before you guess take a moment to take it in the star just go ahead and drop it in the chat tell me what you think allison aquarius cat aquarius aquarius or leo yeah, Aquarius, definitely. Yes, Susan, Aquarius. And the star is, um, you know, really a very positive archetype in the tarot. And it really reminds us ooh, how we're connected to everything and how one thing is connected to the other and one thing feeds the other at all times whether it's evident to us or not and you know you can see the water bearer here which is a big symbol of aquarius and it's you know that part of the deck where we begin to connect to the constellations and those things outside of us a deeper understanding of our consciousness and Aquarius is a deeper, more um, unique through our own eyes, you know, expression of consciousness. And that's what the star really asks for us to embrace. So good job, guys. Let's see. All right. Temperance. Which one do you think? Catherine says Taurus. Anyone else? Taurus. 
I've always thought Libra, but no, it's not. Scorpio. Nope, it's actually Sagittarius. This is, um, temperance is very linked to Sagittarius. And, um, and it reminds us of a healing that is available to us when we transform from something that's difficult into a higher learning, a higher wisdom. Sagittarius is really about, you know, being the philosopher of the Zodiac. It's really about expanding your consciousness and your knowledge to the furthest, you know, depths of your um, mind. And it offers us a wisdom where if you see the angel has one foot in water and one foot in land, and it's like giving us this feeling of, you know, being connected to the earth and to spirit at the same time, being connected through our vessel, through our body and the nature around us to something bigger and more divine. So there's a lot of balance that comes out of this card as well. So Sagittarius, everybody. All right, so we have Aquarius and Sagittarius, right? All right, let's see. The Hierophant. What do you think? This is either Taurus or Scorpio. Wait, why did I bring out Sagittarius? Just <laughs> like, what? wait a second, why? <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Any guesses on? <laughs> Allison was so confused. Everybody's so confused. Okay, but what if, okay, uh, Catherine says Taurus for the Hierophant. Um, Susan says Scorpio. Um, it's definitely Taurus. Connected. Okay, here's the Scorpio card. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Oh my goodness. So um, the Hierophant is a Taurus linked to Taurus, and um, you know, it's really about creating, um, building something, right? Like the Hierophant is about building, um an institution, a, um, a community, something that is solid. So it's very aligned with Taurus um, because it's solid and stable um, and sage. And there's a knowing that comes along with it, um, something that feel, makes us feel safe and secure. Uh, everyone's so confused. I always think of the tower for Scorpio. You know, score it. It could be. It's a very platonic um, card, but for Scorpio, it's definitely death. You know, and that that regenerative. Um, vibe of death, right? Um, the cycles of death and the power. Because you can definitely feel the power here in this card and the symbology of death coming in. And yes, in the card last night, we were having a master class on Tarot in the Anima Collective community. And this card made an appearance, definitely. Because there is a lot of Scorpionic energy right now um, in the 
in the, you know, astrology vibe. And we are really in deep transformation with Pluto right now. And a lot of us are feeling it. So the strength card. Leo, yes. And this is strength with wisdom. And that's what I want to really, really end with today. That, you know, when we're talking about Leo, there's a certain maturity that we've reached to in the Zodiac, where there's a self-expression that now comes with wisdom. And yes, we haven't made it all the way around the cycle just yet. But we have completed certain cycles that have taught us certain things. And we have gained strength and confidence through that. So I really want to encourage you to work with your solar plexus during this time. And if you do own a tarot um, deck... Pull the strength card, put it in your altar, put it in your meditative space, put it in an area where you'll, where you'll see it as a reminder of something that has come to an end and something that you get to gain from this. A cycle that maybe has finished, a relationship that maybe has finished, you know, maybe you're moving, Um Maybe something really deep is changing. A real big transformation is happening. Use this to remind you. Also, a citrine. Use crystal energy. A citrine is a really good energy for Leo energy and for confidence, solar plexus energy. And, you know, you work with these, you, you know, you hold them, um, you know, you uh, put them in your space, clear them out, put them in your altar, um, program them for whatever you need. You can clear these with smoke. You can clear these by putting them outside in the solar energy, right? I would be careful about putting crystals out in the, you know, full moon energy. It has to be, you know, a very grounded full moon. I would definitely use solar energy right now, right? Being that it's Leo, it's just as effective. And, you know, work with your solar plexus. Use the color yellow. Um, come up with an affirmation that makes you feel confident and ready to face the day. You know, lean into your habits that make you feel good. Do things that you love. You know, if there's creative things that you want to dive into, use the energy of Pluto to transform through the energy of Leo in self-expression and creativity, right? And take it slow, ground, integrate, and don't rush through some of the themes that may be coming up for you now. So I hope you had fun with the cards. I'm sorry that I sneak Sagittarius in there. Um, I don't know what that was all about, but that was fun. And uh, hopefully some of you will join us for the upcoming Tarot course that is happening on February 13th every Tuesday night for five weeks at 7 p.m., hosted by the Anima Collective and myself. For more information, please DM me either on Mighty Networks or visit my website at marlenemenendez.com. Send me a message through there or through Instagram at The Modern Mystique. Bye-bye, and thank you for joining us. And if you've never joined us live, I invite you right now. Come on um, Mighty Networks and go to the events page where you find this event that happens every other week. And you'll find a Zoom link where you can hop on and join us here and be part of the energy. Thank you so much for everybody that was here and shared their thoughts. And I will see you in the new moon. Take care. Ciao.